Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. I'm, my name is Zach, and this is my little internet show about whitewater things. And today I'm going to attempt to talk about reading water. This is a tough subject. Uh, I, I've, I've been, a lot of people have asked me to talk about it. I've been a little hesitant because it's, it's just difficult. And that's because reading water, I feel like, is an art. A lot of things are science. A lot of things are science, like uh, rigging a boat, or you know whether Hypalon or urethane are better, or whether these pins and clips in Orlock. Like we we can demonstrably kind of figure those out and, and and have good discussions about them. Reading water is sort of left up to the person, and a lot of it's based on experience. It's like painting a painting, right? You don't you can't just learn how to paint a painting. And I feel the same way about reading water. I, I personally love running new rivers in, in my boating. I, I, I repeat rivers just to practice, keep my skills up, but my passion for the sport comes from seeing rivers for the first time. I love reading water, and I don't know if I can explain that well what I do, but I'm gonna do my best. And I've thought about this a lot, how to teach it, and I'm working on a progression, a lesson plan for this, and so I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna share it with all of you, and if you have feedback for me on how I could present it better, or I don't know, just better information, or what you'd wanna see, please let me know because I really want to make this better and I may do more videos on this in the future. But for now, I'm going to break this up into three parts and do three videos. The first one is just the basics. I'm going to call it hydrodynamics. Some people call it hydraulics or hydrology or all kinds of things, but it's just basic hydrodynamics or whatever, whatever it is. And I'm going to say this is generally applicable from class one to like easy three. I call that three minus. Uh, and and, and kind of can just break down to shoot the V and cut the C. That's what everybody teaches, and I'll talk about that in this video a little bit. Uh, next, I'm gonna I'm gonna have an intermediate uh, intermediate level video, and this is just what happens when you add rocks to a river. Rocks create hole or holes come from rocks, but if you put rocks in a river, you're fine. There's holes, there's perch rocks, there's rooster tails, there's wrap rocks, there's sieves, and so intermediate rapids have a lot of rocks. And I'll talk about how to read water in that level with just rocks in the river. And this is generally like class three to four plus. And then finally, there's like an advanced level course, which I'm gonna do my best to do. And this is just like doing rivers that are the unknown. Maybe you've never done it, so it's unknown. Maybe it's never been done. And so there's an unknown element of what's coming ahead. And there's a set of rules we try to follow in terms of reading river to get down those types of rivers. So that'll be a third video. And I would say this is class four up to class six, whatever that means to be class six. So let's talk a little bit about the basic hydrology. I drew a little river map here. I like doing that. And the first thing you know we learn is shoot the V, right? Shoot down the V. And what that really means is if you're looking downstream, wherever you see water kind of making Vs, that generally means it has a path. And so, you know, if you're my fun little, little rafter guy, and you're coming down here and you see a rock and a V, well, you obviously want to go into the V. Where there's V waves in front of you, that generally means there's current going in that direction. And in a river, and you know, I have the current here on the left and this on the left, but typically the strongest, fastest water is in the center. The center of the river on top. That's where there's the least amount of friction. There's friction on the bottom, there's friction on both sides, but the strongest water is down the middle. That's in the strongest current. And so a lot of times that creates V's. And so a lot of times shooting the V just means go down the middle or the very obvious place to go. You know, this to me shooting the V is just like, hey, go where it's obvious. But but V's are a good way of knowing. Maybe there's probably not a hold or something coming up. So here's my friend Mark Rivers, comma PT, comma DPT, comma badass. He's a great boater. And he's trying to read water right now. There's a few boats in front of him which make it harder. They actually get in the way of his field of view, but that's just reality. Uh, and he's looking for the, a V here. And, and so sometimes the V is in the middle of the river, sometimes it isn't. Here it's on the right. And you can kind of see right now he's heading into a V. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to see. Hopefully you can't see it. Um, and now he's on the right side of the V. And again, that's right down the middle of the river where there's the strongest current typically. Not always the strongest current, but you know, generally. And again, looking down here, there's stuff going on. He sees where the boats are going. And as he reads the water, the boat in front of him right now, it's entering a V, another V right in front of him. And good thing he went there because on the left, there's a hole. The V provides a very obvious path with little resistance. So here's Mark Rivers, comma PT, comma DPT, comma badass, about to enter rubber rapid on the middle fork of the salmon. 
and it's hard to see what's going on. There's nobody in front of him, but he's going to follow the obvious V, and hopefully you can kind of see what we're talking about here with the V in the river, the, the visual that helps you kind of figure out how to go down the center of the current where there's typically not obstacles. And that was just a nice solid line. So uh, the next thing is called sh uh, shooting, uh, cutting the C, sorry, shoot the V, cut the C. So if you look down on this, this kind of forms a C, right? A C that's pointed up that way. Anytime you come around a turn, you don't know it's coming up. We generally try to stay to the inside. So when I'm reading water, I'm looking ahead of me, looking ahead of me, and I see the river bend left, I generally want to be like to the left. And the reason is the fastest water is on the outside. And that's also where trees tend to get deposited. So, so weird things like weird erosion things happen on the outside and there's trees there. And so we generally stay at the inside. It's generally safer, but also you're moving slower. So you have more time to react to something and it's easier to move from the inside of the turn to the outside than it is to fight your way back to the inside. So once you're here, if you're coming down, you see a problem, you can quickly make it to the outside, which you don't want to do here, right? But if you're coming around the outside, you have to really fight back to get to the inside. So, you know, as I look at this river and I'm, I'm reading the water, I'm kind of coming down, I go, oh, look, there's a rock and there's a V, I'll go follow the V. And then it's going around a turn, I'm gonna cut the C I'm going to stay to the inside and then I'm going to come around and go, oh, there's a tree on the right. I'm going to stay left and go to the left. That's class two level reading water, maybe like easy class three. So here's Mark Rivers, comma PT, comma DPT, comma badass, running lower cliff side on the middle fork. And the river's going around a left bend, so he's trying to get left. The only issue is the boat spacing is too tight. The person in front of him is pulling a lot. And so he can't go all the way left. But here your goal would be to get left because so you can get back right pretty easily. And he sees his lines. But now he knows to get back to the inside. So he, he would, ideally he would have gone all the way left like the boat in front of him. But again, because boat spacing was messed up, he had to adjust. And now he's back on the inside of the turn. If he had to get to the outside, which is the right, he could easily do that. Whereas if he had started over there, it would be hard to get to back to the inside. And now he's in really good control of what's going on. And now here's Mark running Pistol Rapid, Pistol Creek Rapid on the Middle Fork. And this is a big S turn. So I, I you know, instead of cutting the C on an S turn, I would say make the dollar sign. So Right now he's on the, the river's turning to the right, so you can see he's on the right, set up to push a little bit right. He's staying pretty far right because he doesn't know what's coming up. And again, if he had to get left, he easily could from the inside. But it turns out the line is to the inside. And he's beautifully cutting the sea here. Now the river is about to go back to the left. So Mark, as the savvy boater he is, He's slowing down to create boat spacing, which is important. He's going to pull to create more boat spacing. I'm sure he could have pushed this move if he wanted to. And now he's getting back left to stay to the inside, which is super smart. Passes that, and now the river bends back to the right again. So he's going to try to get on the right side. I know this is all really subtle which side he's on, but this is good reading water to stay to the inside of these turns. The only thing I would add to this basic level is being able to recognize eddies. Like you need to, from above of you, recognize where an eddy is going to be. That way you can know ahead of time where you can stop and plan ahead for that. And so eddies tend to form behind rocks in the river, like rocks that are out of the water. They form behind rocks and also where the river is going straight and there's a big, like, uh, what do you even call this? Like, there's just like, it, it carves out, right? I, I'm, a, I'm not even sure what to call that, but you guys know what I mean, right? So as the current's coming down this way, it's shooting past this embankment and then backfilling here. So there's an eddy line that kind of starts diverging here. I, you know, this is where, again, we've talked about this before. It's very distinct up top and then it kind of like spreads out. And same thing, when you see a rock, you know there's gonna be an eddy behind it, almost definitely gonna be an eddy. So that's a visual to you that you could go around the rock 
if you needed to, and then if you needed to stop, you could pull over. So you need to see above that that there's an eddy. So again, like on there's eddy lines on both sides of the rock. And then coming around the bend, if you're coming around here, if you look downstream, you see the obvious path is to the left where the V is, not where the trees are. And again, you also see a rock, which means there's an eddy behind it. And so that's being able to recognize, being able to recognize where eddies are, that's an important part of reading water. And this is, you know, it's in a raft, in an orbo when you're learning, it's hard to catch these eddies in the middle. It just takes a lot of skill and a lot of practice. And that's why we really hammer it when we're teaching rowing a lot. But this is where a kayaking and inflatable kayaking really pay off in terms of your skills. Because you can catch all these small eddies pretty easily and you start being able to recognize them quickly if you're reading water. So, you know, anybody who wants to get better at reading water, a great way to do that is get in a kayak and just really start playing with things and figuring things out. So here I am running initiation rapid on the wind and I'm looking at the water right in front of me, but I'm also scanning downstream. So a big part of running rivers is scanning downstream and I'm looking for eddies. And so right now I see an eddy pretty far down there on the left. I'm going to make these maneuvers. I think I lose an oar here, which I hate doing. It's frustrating. Um, and I get caught up here a little bit. So this is a little embarrassing. Not my best line. But I see an eddy on the left. I'm paying attention. I see an eddy there. My friends are downstream. So I'm kind of signaling to them. And I'm looking for eddies all the time. Like there's an eddy behind that rock on the left. And... I see there's an eddy by where their kayaks are, if I needed to catch that eddy. And there's eddy water right there to my right, that is somewhere again, I, could, I use it to slow down here and kind of survey what's going on. So catching these small eddies and recognizing them are key to be able to slow down to make maneuvers like this. I could not have done this if I had downstream momentum. And I see my friends down there, I see there's an eddy behind a rock, and so I want to check in with them, make sure that they, you know, have any questions answered or whatever. So I pull into this tiny eddy that I noticed from above. This is a very small eddy, but these are really important to be able to catch for a communication when you're scouting or something else. So here they, this is their first time on this run, so I'm giving them a little bit of beta as they scout before I go down. And so for me, I know they're good to go. And so I'm going to head down. I see an eddy on the far right. If I need to get to it, you know, I could. I'm, I'm always looking for these eddies. I see that rock right in front of me. I'm about to hit. I know there's an eddy behind that rock. Oh, there's a rock behind it too. But I can use that eddy water to slow myself down right now. You can see I'm going really slow in the eddy water. There's that rock to my right that has slow water behind it that I'm going to kind of use to get myself over to an eddy that I saw before here on the right and again this it's a small eddy but i'm going to come over here just to regroup i was i waited for my friends here but they were taking a long time so i was going to wait and just kind of but they were still scouting at this point but that's good to check in with them and i see another eddy downstream so i'm going to leave this eddy and shoot down to that one Again, there's eddies on both sides of the river and there's eddies behind these rocks in the middle of the river. And so right there behind those rocks, there's an eddy right there in front of me that slows me down. There's another eddy right there behind some rocks. And I'm gonna catch this one just on the side of the river. And this is where I kind of just sort of stop and regroup and uh, wait for them. So that's it for basic level reading water. Uh, again, like this is a lesson plan I'm working on. I know this is very basic stuff for many of you. We'll step it up in the next video, but if you have comments, questions, concerns, as always, leave them in the section below. And don't forget to like, like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, see you next time.